expanding on your consciousness because the root of your consciousness clears up concepts, which is what is needed for everybody, so that we can free ourselves. And keep this in mind, you probably said, European is living off your virtues, i.e., he's a empire, that's what really matters. He's taking advantage of ignorance, he promotes ignorance, and takes advantage of ignorance. One of the issues that we're discussing is the nature of drug license fraud. And keep in mind, that comes under feudal law system versus a local law system. So we want to establish the fact with you already, because we're going to erase this and go into some other things, is that feudal law is more like character of Albion, what you call Roman European styles of government, which has always perpetrated war, forced servitude, serfdom, something like that. The Constitution for the United States of North America is derivative from Muslim law. Its character is allodial, which means it recognizes people's rights, liberties, right to property, due process, intelligent economic systems based on moral substance principles. And that is the nature of the Constitution for the United States of America. That must be comprehended by you so that you can understand different discussions that take place. The things that are conflicting in your life relative to your right of travel, forced driver's license, etc., forced insurance for private corporations that give kickbacks to the politicians, etc., um, with no controls and arbitrary taxation come under feudal systems. The conflicts that you're experiencing now in North America, particularly with the poverty and the economics, has been the clash between these two systems. One of the great problems is, and problems are, of the problems, uh, inclusive of those problems, is that um, aside from the few people who study and who are aware, more aware of the history, most of the masses are aware that the persons who are operating in government in North America at this time are feudalists. And they're assuming that they are legitimate government. They are not. They are imposters. Are we clear? And because these things have not been discussed, people go on about their lives suffering, or losing property, being fined for exercising the rights that belong to them both divinely and under constitutional law, which have been converted into crimes, which the driver's license is one. And it's very important for you to look at that because it covers many areas of social, political, economics in North America. And it is one of the major tools that foreign Europeans have used to subjugate indigenous peoples around the world, particularly those in North America who have been branded artificially Negro, Black, colored, West Indians, Latino, Puerto Ricans, etc., etc., etc. Those are the main targets to feed the monster. And the driver's license is an instrument by which they enter the door. So it is more than what it appears on the surface. And one of the other things that you must recognize and keep this in your head so that when we discuss these things, because we're not going to always be going through all the fine points, so we want to make sure that, you, that you're rooted in the foundation. Driver's licenses, make this very clear, take notes, apply to commercial entities only. Do not apply to natural living, breathing, persons. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Meaning like this. You have a corporation. <laughs> now there's another uh, 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 dynamics that you must keep in mind. Meaning like, like are we coming to the center, right? And you pretty much manage the center uh, from a rightful position, from an intelligent position, from proper order position. If there's something we want to do in here, you know, we are capable to do certain things just as you are. However, the jurisdiction must come through you. That's a principle. It is not a, a point of salami baloney. This is intelligence. It's how things operate. So when you're talking about licenses, 
that are issued, keep in mind licenses are issued by law under what you call officers of customs and duties. And they are issued under this principle and this principle alone to corporate entities that are operating under the privilege of doing business in the lands of another prince or entity, I mean, or uh, farming nation, meaning that licenses are forwarded to farmers who are operating on the lands of another, which means like, all right, say for instance, if this is a household, you can always look at this from the position of family to understand government. This is a household, say you and mother, right? So the children come through here, and we bring our children too, and they're all having fun, right? We will discipline all children. However, the ones whose house is has a little bit more privileges and rights than those who are just entering, because there are certain rules that they must follow. You might be a little bit lax on yours, and it's not that you're intentionally being that way, but this is their house. So the, the neighbor's children having fun, they're not going to be running off on the walls and putting their feet up on the walls that they want to have. Not that they don't do that, and this is what you must understand that operates in governments where licenses apply. Are we clear? Now, your right in law, under law, by law, through law, see that conveyance out there? In law, that conveyance is no different than a wagon that you pull down a tree. Are we clear? Yes. You don't have to register it to nobody but you. Are we clear? Yes. There is no imposition that government has a right to impose on you with that property to travel the public roads and highways freely and unmolested. <laughs> now, the variance comes with foreign corporations that may be doing business here in a, this is very important, in a corporate capacity. That's, that must be very clear to you. Then such benefactors of the corporation, the owner, must get a license for the vehicle, not for the person operating. Are we clear? Yes. The licenses are on the burden of the profiteers. In other words, the corporation is licensed, not the natural person. And licenses apply to corporate entities only. Excuse me, I've I'm going to do this. Even when you're dealing with issues concerning licenses, because one of the things that they have done by converting rights into crimes is that they have listed the natural person, living being, as a corporate entity and converted the obligations of a foreign corporate entity doing business on privileges under uh, uh, um, corporate privilege and corporate benefit and put that burden on the natural person, therefore converting rights that already belong to them in crimes. That's what they base these tickets on. Are we clear? Yes. Sears Roebuck, as an example, you know, they got these um, refrigerators and stuff, dented and stuff like that, they sell in certain places and they got other businesses that they deal with tools and stuff like that. The licenses are applied to that corporation. Not to the people that come into the parking lot to go buy something. They have twisted it. That is how they've converted what you would call bureaucratized forced servitude. Are we clear? Yes. You must understand these principles founded. Not belief, it's fact, do research. Some of these points we put in driver's license fraud, you know, and I have actually an advanced version. But basically, that version comes from a lecture that I did, actually of a lot of uh, other notes. But I try to keep it simple, you know, because people's attention span is, is, is difficult. You know, and so if you can try to give them a foundation and encourage them to study, they will recognize on their own. Keep this in mind. What I've just told you automatically gives you in your mind protocols of operations even without knowing anything more about law. Just simply knowing the distinction between the natural, living, breathing, thinking person that comes from the womb of a mother 
an artificial corporate entity constructed by virtue of the 14th Amendment when they closed the Freedman's Bureau, creating what is known as the straw. And what they've done is they've flipped it and listed us as that straw. This is where Negro, Black, and color comes in to identify from a corporate chattel principle, not by the law, Christian property, and thus licensed because they're artificial persons. Do you understand? Now, it's, it's not complex, but it needs to be refined to people so that they can look at it, so they can use their intelligence. Because if you don't know these things, if you walk into those trade courts, and keep in mind, traffic court is trade court. It's slave trade. Traffic means trade. It's commerce. Are we clear? Yes. It doesn't deal with rights, it deals with privileges. Are we clear? Privileges must be distinguished from rights. Rights are fundamentally in society, unalienable, inalienable, not capable, not rightfully, nor lawfully capable of being sold to or transferred to another. Are we clear? Privileges are the opposite. They are, they can be sold, they can be licensed. That is that you're taking some liberty that someone gives you that has the power that you don't to grant you that activity, thus the license comes into play. Are we clear? Outside of that venue, the license plays no role. If you understand that, you understand your arguments. Are we clear? Are we clear? Yes. Now, so whenever we're talking about writs that you do, or that uh, any conversation that you may have with any corporate entity that's approaching you as a natural person, and misclassifying you as a corporate entity, the way they're talking to you, you must recognize the language and must correct them. Not that they don't know, but you must demonstrate that you know. Understand the word civilian, people say, well, I don't know all, but I need to get a lawyer because we're just civilians. Civilians are required to the law. And you need to know that. So when you see these so-called leader guys and grand Siki guys that's all talking about Drawly didn't teach six, etc. All you need to do is read the divine warning by the prophet for nations, and he says, help me in my mission. And he tells you what the mission is to bring my people back into the constitutional fold of government, enforcing our constitution of the United States of America. That's his statement. And if that ain't civics, supreme, nothing else is. However, infiltrators and liars have lied to him, and thus, this is one of the reasons we have to come out in these venues. Because where it should be taught is not taught by virtue of people agreeing with J. Edgar Hoover to undermine the draw and use the name absent of the instruction. Are we clear? Yes. Now, I go to those venues because I'm part of the temple, but I'm part of the nation person. The issue before us is the affairs of the nation. Most Raleigh told the Moors, study, 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 study well, and when you would have studied well and would ask me what to study next, I would reply, study yourselves. They said, be careful, Moors, some of your own people wearing turbans and feathers will be trying to put you back into slavery. We already gave you the caveats. All you need to do is pay attention to the principles, and you will see them like neon lights. You need not be confused. We need to be busy about our mothers and our fathers' words. Do you understand? And we need to be on point. We need to understand principles. When we understand principles, you can bring cures. When you don't understand principles, you're going to be going to spin wheels. And even when you're operating in principle, you're going to have opposition. Because all of your strengths will be tested. This is why it's important for us to stay on principle. Are we clear? Yes. Now, as you all know, we've delivered to you in past meetings, etc. Um, I don't think we gave you some of uh, Lewis McFadden stuff, but that's in another book. We'll get at you later. But we did give you uh, um, James Trotman's response or dissertation before the floor of the House of Representatives in the Congress concerning uh, actually uh, uh, Roosevelt, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's actions with the war powers, etc. Even though he didn't go into details, 
those who know law and history know what he was talking about. If, but he, in, in his speech, he revealed uh, information that generally has been kept from the public. This is why they set him up and locked him up about nine years. You understand? This is aside from the fact that all those politicians are either Electric Malta, Electric Columbus, etc., you know, Shriners, etc., Blue House Masons, etc., Brook Masons. Doesn't matter. They certain things they're not supposed to be revealed, revealed to, to the public. And one is the feudal nature of the U.S. democracy system, which is a thorough, absolute imposition, imposter government, thoroughly a fraud. And that's what's been operating here. That's been suppressing our people, that they have been calling racism while looking at people's attitudes instead of recognizing it was the very government that was being used to actually destroy them. Do you understand? And then using subdivision states of entity corporations to execute actually inquisition operations in North America and veiling it under law it was actually color of law, and the DMV is a color law institution to activate the secret treaty of the Roman dictum, particularly targeting our people. This is why it is well known, of course, this country and all the little cities that so called, we qualify, persons branded a Negro, Black, and Color, and Puerto Ricans are the major targets. They, they sit like spiders behind billboards and stuff, waiting for you to come past. And they pounce on you. In other words, if your pain can come past 90 miles an hour, you don't let them go, you come in, you're doing five miles, an hour above the speed limit, and they come, lock you down, call 50 cars, and make sure you have your hands on the wheel. So they don't use it as a justification to shoot your tires out, starting before they get you. Because this is their operation. And it confuses our people because their immediate thoughts are the morality of this thing because they don't know that these people are executing the secret of their own. They just think they're precious. They don't like black people tightening up. You know, that's the tag. When, one, they're not black. They're executing the Inquisition operations in North America, operating a feudal system, and we're busy thinking about colors, racism, none of which is going on. All of that is designed to keep you busy so that you don't address real root of the problem, therefore you have no cures until you deal with the root of the problem, see? All right, so you must know where licenses have their origin. They're not founded and constitute. And keep this in mind, this is very important. Governments are established by men to preserve the rights of the men, women, and children of a society. It has no rights to give. It only has obligations and duties which are spelled out in the Constitution, which is a check system of government. <laughs> Constitutions do not give you rights. Constitution preserves and secures and protects your right from corrupt <laughs> government. Are we clear? <laughs> which is why those who know the truth of civilization teach civics and teach the people to enforce the Constitution. <laughs> and when you fail to enforce that Constitution, it is considered, considered wrongfully, but they do it anyway, that you have waived your rights. Then they start instituting their private <laughs> corruption, and this is what has happened to North America. In other words, the people have gone to sleep, and the corruptors have thoroughly corrupted the government and have overthrown the government from within. And one of the instruments was the private license that appears so innocent. You understand? They've used that instrument alone to enslave people. And it looks so <laughs> innocent. You understand? Keep in mind, the U.S. democracy, and as um, we read last night you know, uh, in Delaware, it is important, and I'll, well, I'm going to read it again if I have copy of it right now. That's what those who don't know. And it's not, you know, it's not new news. It's not something that you don't know. But to put this in context, I think it is wise that we be aware of the dynamics of what we're dealing with. I think I have a copy of that. Okay. Let's make sure we can see if it's okay.
<laughs> now, democracy, now as you know, it's not quick. So, what's the remedy? Since we know that that driver's license is an illegal instrument, so what's the remedy to start, for using not using it? To start, to start, the basics that they do, what you have is opposites operating, claims that are not based on truth operating. You have Europeans claiming to be Americans, and we have not challenged it. You have Europeans claiming to be white men, and we have not challenged it. Both of them we've supported which in law constitutes that, we, that we're waiving our right because they're not. Mm -hmm. Europeans are not Americans, right. just like Americans are not Europeans. Right. Although any one of the people may be in different parts of the world at different times. So we're talking political jurisdiction. We have forgotten that these Europeans that are operating in North America do all these anti-social activities, biases and prejudices and lynchings and hangings and dragging people behind trucks and blowing up little girls in church, etc., and then killing people like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, and then shutting down the records and, you know, sealing them for 50 and 100 years and stuff like that, and then sending your children around the world to kill all the people that are Asiatic in the name of democracy and calling it law, God, and country are absolute frauds. Mm -hmm. The people don't know that because they don't study it. The United States Republic is, is a Republican form of government that's founded on a lowlier principles, which is opposite of the U.S. democracy, which is in operation now, which is a democracy system, which I'll read you in the war manual, their own stuff <laughs> to let you understand and let you know that by no accident, they absolutely know what they're doing. Our problem is that we don't know. Now, some of you do, but I'm talking about us in general, which is why we have to do these kind of classes. Because your remedy is to first correct your status. Everything starts with status. This is the reason why they misclassify us. This is like Duali said, why did European coin the names Negro, Black, and Color, etc.? To steal your birthright. Therefore, you've got to study what birthright is to understand the function. Then you've got to understand their motive of operation, what is operandi. So most people just think, based on their education or lack of education, that Negro, Black, and Color are Afrocentric identities. And as soon as they accept that, they've just given up their birthright. It's not willingly, it's out of ignorance, but the effect is the same. Meaning that if somebody stomps on your foot deliberately, or they just walk away and stomp on your foot accidentally, uh, pain ain't less. If somebody wants to play surgeon with you and they don't know nothing about the anatomy of the body, if they start coming at you with a butter knife, it's pretty much wise for you to move. However, if you decide to stay and, you know, you're looking at one of your cheeks over there, <laughs> don't get confused about it and don't, you know, how much you get over there? You know, it's, it's like we've got to stop being naive. You understand what I'm saying to you? Now, for instance, um, Article 4, Section 4 of the United States Constitution guarantees a Republican form of government for every state of the union, which means that's a requirement for them to even be a part of the union. They must have a Republican form of government. Therefore, every state constitution must be Republican in nature. Uh -huh. Anything else is a fraud. Right. Are we clear? Right. Now, what has happened? You'll hear these politicians walking around always talking about our democracy. Do you see the people contesting it? No. Nope. Nope. They consider have waived their rights. So if you don't make a public declaration, an affirmative, it is assumed that you're in that class. In other words, they've created classes, classes of systems to preserve European servitude in the Western Hemisphere. This is one of their tools. Islam. Um, when I was pulled over, I said, what are you pulled me over for? Oh, you know the, 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 uh, you know the procedure. I said, what procedure? I said, what property did I injure? Who did I, um, did I injure somebody property or hurt somebody? I said, who did you pull a mirror from? He says, oh, I said, a license. I said, a license? An illegal instrument? Or you want to see my identification? Oh, uh, he got pissed. And then I said, that to him. So that's when he told the person I was dealing with that I got smart with. I said, I have a right to ask him questions. Mm -hmm. I said, I have every right in the world to ask him anything I want. Mm -hmm. He got mad because I started asking questions. Mm -hmm. Now, this is protocols. Write this down. Protocols 
Whenever you get stopped in your travels on the public roads and highways, your first protocol is, is look for the name and the badge number. Right? Don't start running your mouth immediately. Um, Fred Disseldorfer. Is that your name? You know, that's how you're talking to him. You always talk with, you know, respectfully. Uh, so you don't, not that you don't have a right to, but knowing what their agenda is, because so they, they always try to provoke, because they already know that they are criminals. Right. Okay. So they want to try to revert on you. Mm -hmm. So you, your, your football automatically, number one, what is your probable cause for hindering me in my liberties of traveling on the public rules and highways, exercising the right secured by the Constitution and treaties? Mr. Fred, what's your last name? Dinkeldorfer, badge number 523, whatever it may be. He said, I want to see your stuff. And you said, um, yeah, fourth amendment warrant signed by a competent judge. Um, give me your full name while we're talking, right? Because you're asking for my private property. Absolute for fourth amendment warrant. Now, let's, let's mark this down. Meanwhile, I want your full name, the district that you're operating from, and your surety bond number. And then we can trade places. You know, I'll give you my stuff. You give me your information. However, if you don't have it available, call your superior. That's if you feel like waiting around. You understand? But those are protocols from the door. Immediately, you all keep this in mind. This is also why we also issue in these uh, little packages the oath of ethics that all of them must take. The oath of ethics, they're bound, they're bound to uh, preserve the rights of the people under constitutional principle. This is why you also carry that and remind yourself, and this is why we always tell people to have that. And you also take one side of it and make it an exhibit whenever you're dealing with that. And that goes with, when they give, if you, they give you a ticket, that goes in the case with the ticket, you put the ticket number on there with an exhibit number on there, etc. And with the, um, and remember, don't call them officers because they want to get it. Right. They want you to call them officers, right? And when you call them officers, that's what you call tacit uh, consent to jurisdiction. Because they're not officers, so if you say it, that's so like holding them as an officer at the moment while they're in the business. Right. And so then they take position of the sheriff, which they don't have. I'm telling you what's going on. This is why it's important for you to understand language and understand these fundamentals. And even though you already know that they're criminals, don't speak anything like harsh or anything like that because they want excuses to kill people. Yes. Because that's one of their commitments under the Treaty of Verona to reduce the population and to justify it. You know, you know even if your wallet is the wrong shape, they'll shoot you. You understand? And but they know that they have also the Knights of Columbus judges and clan members who are operating in the government to back them up. Because they're not they're denying due process because they're not a local government. Keep in mind, they're not United States officials. They're US democracy knights for the folks of Rome. This is what people need to know about them. This is why they act arrogant. And so if you know what you're dealing with, you need to know fundamental protocols on how to operate with them. This is also why, even when you're doing an enrich, you also have what's called, what's called co-signers, at least in triplicity, to create that triangle. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, and also on your own stuff, and that's why you fly your coach. And you fly your coach because it automatically sets up diversity, Article 3, Section 2 of the Constitution, and it's, it, it is not assumed, it is already set forth. You understand? This is another reason why you have the nationality, because it automatically sets diversity. So even if they had a legitimate court, the court must go through due process, because they have no jurisdiction, they have to set. And keep in mind that uh, Eisenhower in 54 closed down principal courts, because they have the Negro leader preacher guys that they was paying off 
You understand? To get to try to get these people to start agreeing to be colored people and Negroes under the 14th Amendment so they can march and pray around and then would not have a venue because Consular Court is the only venue in which they're supposed to be dealing with us. You got to understand these things so to understand the politics on how they're operating. Now, with the Negro preachers, you know, actually working for the corporate state and the people thinking they're working for Jesus and God and Allah and all this stuff, they believe these people don't know that these are agents for the corporate state and actually are selling them. You understand? And the ignorant people are the first ones to defend these people. But they say Jesus and they them in grandma's house that should have went to their grandchildren. You, you understand? Not knowing that they are agents for the state. And they tell the people that, you know, we're working for God. And the other power of God. And then when they marry people, they say, by the power of destiny, by the state of New Jersey. <laughs> but they're telling you the truth. They're state agents. First of the and the first thing they do, <laughs> take that marriage certificate, send it to the Department of Commerce. They list it subcategorically in the Department of Orphans, which makes the descendants of that womb non descendant mm -hmm. And wards of the state automatically. This is again why they take liberties. And then they ask for an ID, they ask you for an ID of your bloodline? No. That driver's certificate, which is a contract that converts your rights into a crime. And then you present it as an identity, and it's not an identity, which makes you a fraud. Therefore, they're innocent because you're giving an instrument claiming it is identification because they said so, and it isn't. Mm -hmm. so it's I a business contract in commerce. I flipped the switch, the switch, the script on it. Yes, I because identity does not have an identity doesn't have an expiration date. That's what he got all bad about. Do you, do you want to, not only that, <laughs> it's not a contract for, for traveling or not. You know, your license is expired. What identity is expired? Uh -huh. People can't even think. They say, you give me a identification, give me a driver's license. Driver's license is not an identification. Right. But the very, they have room people to start believing that. And the people become lemmings and actually are delivering their rights without the challenge because they don't know what their rights are. It's one reason why they're drawing toward their rights. So the deal of this is that you must understand that when they approach you, that there's a protocol of questions you ask them. And you can say for the record. So keep in mind, when you ask them for their name, their badge number, and their surety bond, keep this in mind, oaths and surety bonds go together. When oaths are filed of any particular person at a public service, and all of them are bound to this, the surety bond is connected to it. This is why when you ask for them, they do not produce them. You know why they don't produce them? Because most of them don't have them. So they're asking you for insurance under a color of law when the surety bond is their insurance that they're supposed to produce when they stop you. How come they don't do that? Because they don't lose people are And so what you have is clan members. And if you notice in most of the so-called police departments, they're a majority of European males. Right. Yep. Yep. With extreme clan attitudes. Yep. You know, sometimes they kind of cover it up, but their arrogance still shows through. Yes, it does. You know, and you go to any courtroom any day and you see the majority of the people is, is people Asiatics. Yep. And Puerto Ricans. Yep. The majority. I went to federal court, that's why I Any that. one of them, they run townships, because we're the target. They throw in a few Europeans here and there right. to make it look like, oh, they're doing it through their own, so they're poor. Yeah, uh, you know, but, and our people even say things like that. However, it doesn't remove the fact that the, that the process is void of law. The court has no constitutional foundation whatsoever. The highest court in the land, the Supreme Court of the United States, has declared all traffic courts as incompetent. And they are administrative, administrative clerks pretending to be judges. In fact, they're not only committing impersonation of officers, they're racketeering. Let me finish them, then we answer your question. This is the reason why most of the traffic courts do not have records. If it doesn't have a record, it's not a court. Keep this in mind. Without the record, you can't appeal. Why? Because an appeal requires the transcript of the record. Do you, if you understand these fundamentals, 
It gives you consciousness of protocol, which all of our people need to know, and you need to teach it to the children before they're expounded on the road. Not after they get into trouble, etc., and stuff like that, and they're caught in the system, because they're going to be targeted anyway. So if we would teach our people those things necessary to make them better citizens, then half of these corruptions that are normal, particularly in our communities, would not exist. As an example, you know, just like when we were home, coming home last night, right? One of the things that we were talking about when we were coming through South Philly, where in the European neighborhoods, down South Philly, they're parked 3D, sideways on the curb, on the building, <laughs> wrapped around the pole, and everything, right? Don't see nobody running, nowhere with no tickets. You come anywhere in West Philly, North Philly, etc. People mind their business, car park in their driveway, car mind is business. Mm -hmm. They go find them, tires, and ain't got enough tread on them, give them tickets for that. Somebody got tinted window in, in their vehicle, they stop them and call five cars, coming on both sides with guns and everything, looking for excuse to shoot them with tinted windows. You know, they, they don't even have to be speeding, they don't have to be doing anything. Give them 59 tickets. Do all kinds of traces for them. We search them in Afghanistan, see if they was there, see if they paid Santa Claus and lay the bill. I'm telling you. But that's all treaty of the Do you understand? That's all all those operations, all of those operations come from the U.S. democracy. They're absolutely disallowed on the United States Republic. Are we clear? Islam. Knowing this, and knowing that the Supreme Court already said that they're criminals, why are they still operating? Because people must enforce the law. Gotcha. Keep this in mind. I understand. Back up again. When the Moors brought the Europeans into, into form of government, and this comes back to some of the things we were talking about earlier, sis, they are deists. Deity, deity, Mercury, Jove, etc. Hermes Trismegistus. Etc. They're deists. They're not right wing whispers. Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Thomas Barclay, agent in business, George Washington, they were not right wing Christians. They're deists. That's what qualified them to be part of this government. The United States government was absolutely not founded on Christian doctrine. Deists, what is deists? Deists are those who what you would call study ancient Asiatic African culture. This is why they're all Masons. That's why they all got fences. That's why George Washington's lodge down there in Alexandria, Virginia, got fences of all the lodges. Forbes down there, Harry Truman, president of Mexico in the 1800s, where the feds on with all our written on it. It's no secret except to the people here who keep thinking these people are Christians. And then they trying to be Christians. If you understand. This is where we violated ourselves. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because we don't even know the history here. Do you, do you understand? Our concepts are wrong. But it's for the purpose of maintaining servitude. Now, the trading banner, like they call the Star Spangled Banner, people loosely call it the American flag because the Europeans have been calling it the American flag. What it is, is, it is, is an American amity and commerce trade banner, specifically between the Moors and the Christians, i.e. fundamental to the operations of the United States Republic doing business in Morocco, Northwest Africa. It is an agreement. It is not the national flag, it is the national commerce flag. Are we clear? Your red stripes represent seven million. It is Moorish. The white flags represent the European nations, Dutch, you know, Germany, etc., England, etc. And their corporate businesses to do business here. It's a commerce fact. Your canton with your stars is the ethereal plane or the cosmological character upon which it is built. Are we clear? It is not the national flag. The national flag is the red flag with the five-pointed green star in the center 
That's the Al Moroccan flag, the American flag. On the clear. Okay. However, when great people are first given this information, a lot of information, a lot of concepts that they have are not challenged because it causes confusion. And so people say, that's the Moorish American flag. Look at the two flags. People say that, and it's not correct. You know, uh, y'all got this? Let me try to give you a little bit of demonstration so that you can kind of comprehend a little bit. Not only that, when that trading banner is properly displayed, it's actually displayed like this. That way, not this way. That's, we fly it that way, but it's actually that way. You understand? Now, for this to be operating properly, see this is the American flag. Right? And this is what we call the binding flag for them to do business here. That's red. This is red. That's white candle with a green cedar tree, what they call tall cedars of Lebanon. That's also one of the secret societies. It's called also the Bunker Hill flag, the continent toll flag, flag of the continent. This flag must be flown with this flag for this flag to be legitimate in its operation. Are we clear? When these flags are flying, they're actually going to be all three of them together. Sovereign Sanctions Union. Do you understand? And you will see in the secret societies, like say in George Washington's Live, you see the tall cedars of Lebanon, which is one of the secret societies, and they take the canter out here in that same In other words, you've got to know a little bit about your history so that you can understand the politics. And also, when Dwali, come on, brother, when Dwali says to the Moors, you're part and parcel of the said government, you need to know what he's saying. But because we've been held under subjugation, we have this tendency to think from a subordinate position when actually we're the superior. Mentally, we become inferior. Politically, we've been forced into an inferior position, but in fact, we're really the nobles and the sovereigns of the land who've just been overthrown. This is the foundation of their attitudes towards you that you've been calling presence. And once you understand these things, you understand it's not a defense of their activities, you understand their motivations. When you understand their motivations and they, uh, they comprehend that you do, their attitude will, will, be, will change because they cannot maintain the superiority complex. The superiority complex is based on the fact that they know that most of us don't know. I'm clear. All right, now, and also, on the fact that they have enough people on our side that are selling you out. Yes. Do you understand? And yes. keeping you intimidated. I mean, you can't do that. You know, you know that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, when you start submitting to the bull that they feed you. You understand? Now, you, got, you got this date, right, Tom? Mm -hmm. It's okay, right? Yep. And How many, actually it's longer than this if you're given a date. How many years of just flying over Northwest Africa or Northwest of Mexico? 10,000 Over 10,000 years. Over 10,000. 10, and really it's really over 70. Because seven. You, yeah. Seven? Yeah, you'd be white with a gold star. I'm the more white nation. How long was this flag doing business here in the Northwest Continent? 300 years. Not quite. What's it? For 
when they violate that Constitution, which is the covenant, all operative rights that the Europeans have in any form of law operating in the Western Hemisphere is dead. And any so-called U.S. citizens, which are juristic, as distinguished from the true Aboriginal indigenous people of the land, which is two different statutes, cannot be distinguished. Why? Because it's a birthright. Now you understand the principles that you see taking place in other governments when they're having problems with colonial operations, and you see the presidents in South America and other countries like Hugo Chavez in Bolivia, Argentina, South Africa, where they nationalize the electric grid, nationalize the apartment buildings because these Europeans' head funds are, 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 are locking their people down and are raping their people, and they're what, nationalizing the rice fields and the sugarcane fields and everything, and then these Europeans don't like them? Right. Why? They're claiming their right. You must do the same. You cannot do it if you're not in your proper person. Are we clear? Yes. Which is why they created the Negro Black and Colored brands so that when you started arguing rights and that brand is there, your whole argument is dead. I don't care how eloquently you present it. I don't care how many chandeliers you put up. You know what I mean? How many speakers you got in front of you. And how many boys on the line like this, guards and this stuff, they can all import Negroes, Negroes and all that stuff. No. It's not recognized anywhere on the planet called Earth because they are in total dishonor of their mother and their fathers from whom the law comes. Because all nations put their trust in the names of your forefathers, not in some brands that you've accepted from some European that start telling you that human beings are crayons and you bought into it. And they're going to sit around and talk about rights. Meanwhile, they're operating on law that your forefathers set up when you're not even on this is what our problem is, are we clear? And then we turn around saying, that's that right and that stuff. Well, they're telling the absolute truth, except that you're being a white man, you are. I mean, our, our own biases even undermine us, because we don't even know the language. Our people think it's this, and it's a status. You know, and so these little subtleties, if we don't correct amongst our people, and they keep going out into the world, they're going to keep getting beat up. They're going to get beat up when you're right. You know what I mean? But at least you're going to reduce the losses. You get the point? You go out there wrong with misconceptions, because that's miseducation that they taught you. You just set yourself up. You, you understand that. And so the fundamentals must be comprehended, must be understood, so that you can talk. Your experience, uh, not surprising. You know? And as I was talking to you, it is because I want you to be right. Although you were right that they were wrong. You, you understand? Because once you start studying, you can catch you can catch the BS. And then they, what they were trying to do is pull rank on you. You understand? They, yeah, they just pull rank on you. However, oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. <laughs> you know. But that, uh, one of the, the issues, one of the interesting things, and one of the good things is usually when uh, sisters start really getting this right, and that mother energy comes out. The mother energy is a desire to protect family. Right. It's by nature. It's not, you know, like, it ain't like you got an attitude, you get one now, you want it. But it ain't like that. It's nature. Okay. Particularly when you know somebody's snow, snow in, you, in your face. You may not know it all, but you know BS when the breeze comes through. That ain't being a bug. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we got a pull on you. And so what we want to do, what we attempt to do, honorably, is uh, do the best that we can to our own, to make the people competent, that the people can take this to the next degrees that they need to be in. Because when we leave here or any other venue where information is given, you know, you're, you're on your own in a sense. Therefore, you're not supposed to be the follower of anybody. You're supposed to be capable. And it was all coming to you training in college. You know, I don't want to be coming out there, you know, and somebody coming at me and I'm going to down. And you see, I have a chance to be able to do that. I'm not supposed to be standing like this. You know, you know, you know the, the practice, thank you, brother. The practice is for so that you can operate naturally and smoothly. 
Sometimes you even need to kind of off balance, knowing how to get your balance, how to square up. You, you understand? Just natural. It must become your own. Yes. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. yes. That's the point. Yes. And so certain redundant uh, issues that we'll make is so that it becomes your own, that becomes natural with you. That is not artificial. Oh, yeah, let me see. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, no. Understand the concept so that you can speak without voice. If they strip you of everything, you can speak. Yes. You understand? But the issue is, this is how they test you. They take what you got, or they don't follow you, stuff that see how you want to handle it. You understand? They may come absolutely from your stand, but not from the angle that you present. And you may think they're not addressing, and they are addressing, they're testing you. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because remember, they already know what your culture is because they work toward it. Mm -hmm. And other parts, they sold it. You know, so when you're looking at the European, thank you very much, Mr. We can't, we don't always look at, he stole this. The Moors brought them into civilization with the Renaissance for two, three centuries that they admit to. 13th, you know, the 14th through 16th century. The Moors entered into Europe to clean up Queen Europe's spot. See, because we sent it, accepted England or the land of Angles to them. Because that's not theirs either. That's ours too. You understand? And so they were in such disorder and still acting half savage. So logically, the Moors come in there to clean up the house and bring them out of darkness for the medieval period into marvelous light. And this is where you get the tradition in the university of the seven, seven, seven liberal arts. The Moors brought that into Italian, which is called Italy, Italy, and into Andalusia, which is called today Spain. You understand? And they taught the Europeans mathematics, calculus, advanced trig uh, trigon uh, trigonometry, uh, architecture, the principle of the equilateral tri uh, uh, triangle, etc. Uh, advanced mason, mason um, reverse 